Hello everyone. Um, this is Mark, Mark van der Neinde, and I'm here with Sujit Ravindran. Uh, we would like to just give you a, a brief introduction to the Summit for Human Potential Realization and kind of set the context before we enter into these two and a half days together. So, Mark, how would you define what you as being at full potential? So when I think about the work we do at being at full potential, um, there's the image of a, of a bridge that comes to mind. And specifically, um, I see our role as building this bridge between the, the current reality, the current paradigm that we live in and that organizations operate in, and this, this new paradigm that is emerging. And so when I think of the work that we do, it's about building this bridge, helping that transition, enabling that transition to take place. And so the assessment tool is one way of doing that, is of opening up those new conversations, of engaging people where they're at, um, and helping them take the next step. The, the human potential methodology is another um, mechanism for enabling the, the transformation, enabling the change. So that's kind of what we do. Now, being at full potential is not just about doing. Um, actually, it's very much about being. So perhaps, Suji, you can say a few words about who do we aspire to be in this work? Who do we aspire to be? Um, again, I take a lot of inspiration from the four beings that we have uh, in the human potential model. Um, those four being states, that is what I practice trying to be, trying to embody uh, in every moment of my life. Um, I want to be aware, I want to be inspired, I want to be abundant within, and I want to live a life being in service. Now, what we know, right from our personal experience, but also from uh, all of our history and mythology and the lives of great leaders, is when we can inspire and allow others to step into that peak experience, the peak inner state, peak performance automatically follows. So one, 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 one example that comes to mind is, you know, in the organizational world, we often talk about innovation, creating breakthrough innovations, which for me is in the realm of performance, peak performance, because mm -hmm. we know that when we truly can deliver a breakthrough product or service in the market, that the, the results, the bottom line results will, um, will benefit from that. So when I think about innovation and what's behind innovation, clearly it's this, this being state, this being inspired state. So as we access our, our inspiration, as we can, can, can live into that experience of being inspired, we start to, to see beyond the current barriers, the current roadblocks, the current constraints, and we can start to imagine new opportunities, new ways forward, new ideas start to emerge. And those <coughs> new ideas with the right context, with the right conditions, will grow into, mm -hmm. into, into true innovation, true breakthrough innovation. And so, so the question comes back indeed, like you said, how do you create that experience, that peak experience of being inspired, for example? Now that we've established that this peak experience or peak inner state automatically leads to peak performance, uh, the question of how do we embody this peak inner state, that process of embodying uh, our peak inner state is not a, an overnight process. It is not a process of 
simply flipping on a switch and uh, we can step into this peak inner state. This instant, it is a function of ongoing practice until that, that mindset or those attitudes become our innate state. We've identified eight being attitudes that if we continue simply practicing this, these eight um, be relentlessly, then we will make a habit out of the four being states. And that brings us, again, uh, what we aim to accomplish with the summit. Uh, would you like to speak to that, Mark? Sure. So when it comes to the summit, we've had to make a number of choices. And ultimately, we've, we've, we've chosen to focus on these, these deeper levers of human potential realization or organizational transformation, which are these attitudes, these eight being attitudes. And so these two and a half days are going to fully revolve around that. We're going to be prioritizing um, the immersion into these attitudes embodying these attitudes, living from this place, practicing from this place, and together co-creating from this place. And ultimately, we're going to end up with a number of breakthroughs. And these breakthroughs are in the areas of, of new language, which is going to emerge, new rituals, new symbols, and new ceremonies. And Sujit, I'll hand it over to you just to briefly explain why this is so important and, 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 and why this is, this is the ultimate objective that we have, the, the deliverable that we're moving towards. For any culture change to happen, uh, we need, as you correctly pointed out, Mark, we need to create new language, new symbols, new rituals, and new ceremonies that we need to adopt. And in due time, a group of people will evolve from one culture to the other. That is really the four, the four concrete areas where we can act in order to create culture change. So, so there we go. That's what awaits us. Uh, in these two and a half days, September 20th to 22nd, in Castel de Berecht, Barlow, Netherlands. We are immensely excited about uh, the adventure that's going to unfold and the amazing group of people that are coming together for this. And we look forward to meeting you on the Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m.